Okay. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Okay, I'm happy to be back home. Those that uh, are old, like I have become, they, we, must, we can remember that uh, I was counting the number of years since I left this church, and they have accumulated to 24 years. Can you imagine? 24 years. It's amazing. It's amazing. And uh, I'm happy to be back to my friends. Can see uh, those that were older than me. <laughs> can see Professor there. And uh, those that were my age mates. I think Moroki could be my age mate. I'm not sure. And uh, Tom, these people. I saw quite a number of them. And then I'm, I'm surprised that um, the lady who is now the church clerk here, when we were seated there, she told me, you know, Pastor, when you were here, I was an adventurer. <laughs> you may have grown to become this big lady. Oh, it's amazing. I'm so happy to see all of you. Thank you, lovely children. Lavington was my church also. I'm so happy to see you. Thank you, Pastor Nyaga and uh, the, the, the leadership of uh, Nairobi Central Church for giving me a chance to come back here and, and see you and fellowship with you as we prepare for the soon coming of our Lord, the King who is coming to set up his kingdom. So I came with my wife. I am still very close to her. And uh, I would want her to stand and say hello. Where she is, Mary, where are you? This is the lady I chose. Oh, there she is. <laughs> that lady has been with me for quite a lot of time now, a long time now. I was counting the years, 45 years. Can you imagine how life can, uh, can just grow like that? So Mary, thank you for supporting me, and I'm happy that I chose you. Now, friends, uh, Pastor Nyaga and Pastor Tirop have been talking with them, and they asked me to come over Mrs. Mwachi, the Sabbath school superintendent, she asked me to also, you know, to come and share with you some of the things that um, I value very much in my heart, the things that are very close to my, to my heart. And uh, by the grace of God, I had the time, I was around, so I said, yes, I'll come. I'll come and see and, and, and share with you. You don't know, could be some of you don't know since then. I'm now a muse. I re got retired last year, so I'm a muse. I'm a senior citizen. Can you imagine? The other day I was a young man jumping all over. And now I'm a senior citizen. Can you imagine? I'm a senior citizen. <laughs> I've joined the, the ranks of my seniors. And so, uh, before I get into the message, just to, uh, to tell you what some of the things I'm doing, I'm now, I live in Thika. That's where I live, and go every day to Ongata Rongai because I have some interest there. Uh, we are running a school, so if you are there, you can bring your kids, Babu. Huh? I'm also running a rehabilitation center for those who have challenges with their, with their issues. Issues, You know issues are there? So I'm running a rehabilitation center there for people who have had issues with their, with their, with their minds. So we are correcting people there, getting them back so that they can think about God. See, when you are in those, that confusion, you can't even think about God. So there, you can get me there. And uh, you will talk. You will talk. I am also counseling people. With my age now, the experience I've gathered, I can say one or two things that can help you. So... You can call me, hey, pastor, I want to come and see you. You are most welcome. I I'm also in the mediation, just in case you have issues that you can't agree. I'm a, I'm a certified mediator, so you can sit and talk. And uh, I'll just listen to you, listen to the other one, and then you have your own solution. You know you have the solutions, both of you who are quarreling. Only that you are so impatient with each other, you can't listen to each other, so the, the problems are not solved. But if you had somebody to sit with you, take you through, 
you, oh, what were we fighting after all? It's nothing here. So that's what I'm doing now in my retirement. And you are very much welcome uh, to, to, to be with me. So there we are. Now, when uh, I was told that this is a Sabbath, uh, the guest Sabbath day, Sabbath school has organized that we have guests. It reminded me of 1998 when I was pastoring this church. And we had a guest day. I remember the date was uh, 17th October. I can still remember. And we invited people to come for, for guest Sabbath day. And they came. And can you imagine one of them who came? That same day, she made up her mind to follow Jesus and even become a Seventh-day Adventist. And today, the work that family has done for the Lord in Kikuyu land, they have opened churches. That one day that she came and became an Adventist. So, this is a very important day that um, you chose to have. And thank you, Nairobi Central, for leading from the, from the front. I saw you are saying there, uh, was, was this 01? 01, eh? SDA 01, eh? Zero one, you know, <laughs> that's your position. That's your position as a church. And so uh, I want to thank you that you can consider such a day where you can invite people to come, people who are not even, uh, they are not practicing Adventists at the moment. I don't call them non-Adventists. I call them potential Adventists. I never, dis I, never, I never give up on anyone. Everyone is potential. So I call them potential Adventists. And then the Sabbath school, we'll be talking about this one later in the afternoon, but Sabbath school, as you know, is a heart, is a heart of the church. And I can see here, you have said something here, Sabbath school influencing beyond all what? Limits. Sabbath school is the heart of the church because this is where we come to fellowship. We come for fellowship. We come and are equipped for community service. We also do Bible study. We also learn about taking the gospel out there. So those are the four pillars of, uh, of the Sabbath school. And you, are, you have done well as a church to have this day. So when I was now praying and asking God, what do you want to t me to, stay, to say to the people, that my old members and also the, the visitors who will have come? Then the Lord impressed in my mind. Let's talk about this very important subject. Let's talk about the kingdom of God. Let's talk about this one. So that's the message I have for you, the kingdom of God. And um, I'm discussing four things. One, what is the kingdom of God? Then, who are the heirs? Who are the citizens, uh, so to speak, of that kingdom? Who are the subjects of that kingdom? And then, what is the conduct of those citizens? How do they behave? And then the last bit, what are their responsibilities? These people that are citizens, these people that are the, 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 the citizens, the subjects of this kingdom, what is their responsibility? So when I do those four things, I will have done for this morning. And then I was surprised that uh, I'll also be viewed uh, through K KBC. So I said, wow, this is an opportunity I haven't heard, uh, you know, you are making me national. I'm national, I'm a national speaker right from here. So, <laughs> and by extension, international, because there is what, there is YouTube and all this. So I said, wow, today must be a big day for my ministry. So let's go, let's start now. Let's start. The, the scriptures, we have done the scriptures. Am I pressing here to go ahead? I go ahead, okay. So thank you. All right. All right. Those are the scriptures that I have chosen for today's presentation. There are two of them. One of them is the one that is famous. This one is a famous text that talks about for the gospel of the kingdom. What, what made me choose that is because of the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to everybody, everyone, everyone, to be a witness. And then, and only then, the end shall come. So that one. And then Hebrews 12, thank you my sister for reading so well. We are talking about we, therefore we who are receiving the kingdom. Then we are, how are we supposed to conduct ourselves? 
That is what I'm also going to discuss in this, in this presentation. So, let me go and let me say this. Okay? One, is it? Okay. One of the basic needs for the human, for the human beings is reigning, being in charge, being in control. That's one of the basic needs that God put in us as was creating us. He created us and put us in charge, to be in charge, to be in control of the situations around you. A basic need for human beings. We want to be in control. We want things to be under us. We don't want to be burdened by things. That we don't want that. We want to be in charge. If you are the muse in the house, you want to be there and you want you know, be, things to be okay in your, in your family. This is one of the ways we are like God. You see, God created us in his own image. When he was creating us, in Genesis 1, 26, there he says, and God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. One of the ways we are like God is that we have leadership. We, have, we reign. We have control over situations and over things that are around and about us. That's one of the, uh, the ways we are like God. God created us in his image and likeness. That's what I've said. He desired that his children, that's Adam and Eve, would be king and queen. Adam was supposed to be the king of this world. And Eve was supposed to be the queen. And when they, gave, they, they were blessed to give children, then they were supposed to have children. They were supposed to have children. Their children would be princess. I had a problem with the English there. Because princess and princesses you know, had a problem there. But princess are uh, us, the male. You no, know, we're supposed to be prince. <laughs> okay? Uh, <laughs> and for the ladies, our sisters, we, they were supposed to be princesses. Am I, I can see, see the English teachers are smiling at me here. So that is what we were, we were supposed to be after Adam. Adam the king, our mother, the queen, we, the men, princes, and the ladies, our sisters, princesses. That's how God wanted it. And this was going to be like that for eternity. This was going to be like that forever. Can you imagine today, 6,000 years later, if it wasn't for sin that was allowed into this world, we would all be going to our, our king, Adam, and asking him for, hey, how are you, Mze? How did you... No, we would be going to Mze, the king, and the mother, the queen, would be going there, getting stories, getting information, getting wisdom. When sin entered, as you all know, when sin entered this world, it changed the whole plan. The whole plan was altered. The whole plan was put in disarray. Adam and Eve lost their position and also their authority. They lost it. They lost it. Can you imagine? People who are supposed to be ruling over all these big animals, the giraffes and all these animals, the lions and all this, they are now being ruled by small things that are even, some of them are not even, cannot be seen. The germs that are killing us cannot be seen. They have to be looked through a microscope. And they are killing people. Mosquitoes, these small things, you know how many people they are killing. Small things like mosquitoes, which were supposed to be even, no, you don't even think about, they exist. But now, when Adam and Eve lost it, they lost the, the, the kingdom, they also lost the authority that was theirs. Satan usurped the position he took it by force and has been behaving and acting as the king of this world. And I'm saying there for now. It's only for now. He's behaving and acting like the king for now. Only this short time. When he was thrown from heaven, the Bible says that he was thrown down here and he was so angry because he knew his time was short. So he's just acting and behaving like a king for this short while. Hallelujah. Soon, the Lord is coming to put things back to what he had intended that they be 
forever. Second Corinthians 4 and 3 and 4 there, John, it is talking about Satan being the god of this world. He's not a joke. He's, he's not a joke. He's, he, he's taking control of this world for now and for this short while. God's ultimate plan is to give back the kingdom to us. God wants to give us the kingdom. That's why he's saying the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. God wants to give us back the kingdom that was taken from us. Matthew 24, 14, that's the, we are saying the gospel of the kingdom. God desires to get the kingdom back to us. So much so that he chose to sacrifice his only son to make this happen, to make this possible. He gave up his son. He sacrificed his only son to make this one possible, to have you get your kingdom back. The kingdom of God is eternal. And that's why God gave us his son so that he could give us eternal life, which makes it possible to inherit the kingdom of God. You see, even in this world, you see people want to be on top of others. People want to, to be whatever positions are in the world here. They want to be the MCAs uh, and all these small things here, the governor, those small things, I call them small because comparing them with my big thing, uh, the, the thing I want to Jesus, these are small things. Being the president of a country, it's a small thing. I'm looking at a kingdom that's going to be eternal. Hallelujah. I can't sacrifice my kingdom in heaven for these small, small kingdoms, three years, four years, these short ones here. No, I, can't that, I cannot be that uh, thick. I want a kingdom that's going to last eternity. That's the one I want. That's the one I, I have asked God to give me. The phrase kingdom of God, also kingdom of heaven or kingdom of light, appears more than 80 times in the New Testament. You can see it is a serious thing. It's a big thing. It's a big discussion in the New Testament. 80 times. That's not a small time to discuss one subject. It's a huge, it's a huge, huge, huge discussion in the New Testament. It appears more than 80 times in the New Testament. Most of these references occur in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. While the exact term is not found in the Old Testament, the existence of God's kingdom is expressed similarly in the Old Testament. We don't see it as in the Old Testament like with the New Testament, but it's also being there. It's mentioned there. It's there. But in the New Testament, 80 times is a huge discussion. This kingdom is heavenly. It's not ugly here. It's not small thing here. As I've said, these small things here. It's heavenly for the God of heaven sets it up. It has been set up by the God of heaven. So it is heavenly. It, it, that it, it exalts. It is up there. It is evidently a holy kingdom. Holy kingdom. For the will of God is to be done in it as in heaven. So this kingdom that we are talking about is the holy kingdom. It is a holy kingdom where the will of God is done. And he said unto them, when you pray, say, our Father which art in heaven, how Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come. That's the kingdom we want. Holy kingdom. Thy will be done as in heaven, so in, on, on this, in, this, in this earth. The other thing about this kingdom, it, it is a righteous kingdom. It's where righteousness lives, dwells. It is a righteous kingdom. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the, in the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. If you don't, if you don't, like, if you don't like the word ghost, <laughs> you know, some, some words change meaning over time. Ghost looks bad, eh? But that is the Holy Spirit. It's not, it's not, but if you don't like the, the word ghost, you can say spirit. So we are saying the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy. This is the, this is the kingdom I want to be in. This is the kingdom I want. It is an everlasting kingdom. The kingdom you are talking about here is an everlasting kingdom. It's not a kingdom that is so short-lived like the, the ones I've just mentioned. In Kenya here, your MCA kingdom is only for, actually, you, you win it now and you start worrying the same day. <laughs> you, you have gotten it now, you have started worrying about it right that time. 
Very, very bad kind of uh, kingdom. I don't want that. The kingdom of God is an everlasting kingdom that shall stand forever. Our psalm there, Psalm 24, 7, and all that, those verses say, to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. That's the kingdom I want, my friends. Oh, see, Puna, this is the kingdom I want. I don't want these small ones. I want this kingdom that is going to endure throughout all generations. A kingdom that is going to last forever. This is a gospel that must be preached to everyone so that people can remove their minds from these small kingdoms and focus on the big kingdom, the big kingdom that's going to last forever. Well, at that moment, I, I should have said this one as I began. I'm so sorry, my, my, my elder brother, my father, uh, elder Oburu, I've just heard you talking, and I was wondering, what is, what is Mzee saying? What happened? I'm so sorry, Mzee uh, Oburu and the family, for, for that loss. I, I, you know, that's, this, so I don't want this kind of life. I don't, know that, I don't want to be in a kingdom where people lose their loved ones. I want to be in a, in a kingdom that's going to be forever. So, Mzee Oburu, don't worry. It is going to be well soon when the Lord comes. Hallelujah. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. That's the kingdom you are talking about, my people. Daniel 7 says that, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. This is a kingdom, my friends, I want you to, to look up to. Watch this small king, leave these small kingdoms of a, a manager or, you know, these small kingdoms of a manager of a certain company. Those are small things. Don't let them distract you from this big one, this big one. The kingdom of God is both physical and spiritual. Spiritual now in this world as you await Jesus' second return, when it will be physical, it will be real with Jesus at the throne, surrounded by billions of angels and people who will have accepted the invitation. So right now, the kingdom of God is, is in our hearts. We are giving Jesus an opportunity to rule in our hearts. That's his reigning in our hearts. He's reigning in our thoughts. But soon, soon, it's going to be physical. It's going to be real. Jesus is going to come surrounded by billions of angels. And he'll come and take billions of those who have accepted the invitation. So, please, be one of these. When I look at the book of Revelation and see the many people, the many people who John says he could not even count, they were like the sand of the sea. Then I ask, how can I miss? How can I miss? You know, how can I miss all these many people? How could I miss? Why should I miss? If there are people that are numberless, people that cannot be numbered, are going to be in that kingdom. Why can't I? The subjects. Who are these subjects? I finished with that one. Now I want to go to who are the subjects of this kingdom? Who are they? The subjects or heirs of this kingdom are those who are described by Prophet Daniel in Daniel 2.44, Revelation 12.17, Revelation 14.12. Let me say a little bit about that one. The one of Daniel 2, 44, it says that there, let me just, just give me a minute there. Let me just go to this. All right. Can I, okay. Let me go to this one first. Okay. All right. Are you pushing me, my friend? Okay. All right. I, I want now the, okay. Let, let, okay. let me finish with this one. I'll go back there. Now, here we see in Daniel 2, 44, it is talking about the kingdom that will rule this world from the time of Nebuchadnezzar. You must have heard about this, Nebuchadnezzar. And for the visitors who are visiting with us, King Nebuchadnezzar was a king of a big kingdom known as Babylon. It was a superpower that time. 
and he, get, he got a dream. I'm going to show it in a moment. He got a dream, and in that dream, God wanted to show him the whole history from the time of Babylon to the time of Jesus' second coming. And so, verse 244 of Daniel, it talks about of after all these kingdoms were destroyed, then God is going to set up a kingdom that shall rule forever. Let me go, yeah. Okay, my friend, push this one for me. Get me the, the image there. All right, that one. Okay, that one. That is the image that Daniel got in his dream. I know not Daniel, but Nebuchadnezzar. He had this dream, and the dream was so intriguing. It was so disturbing, but it got lost. In the morning when he woke up, he could not remember anything. But the dream was disturbing him. He, it meant something great, but he could not remember. So you remember what he said? He called the, all the people, all the wise men of Babylon. They all came. They all came. Astrologers came. Magicians came. Sorcerers came. Warogi came. All, all, all of them came. You see, this is, what, what is, a, this is a big problem. When people get in trouble, instead of going to God for, for solutions, they go to fellow people who don't know anything. So Nebuchadnezzar did not know any better. So he called all these people whom he thought were his wise men, his advisors. He called them, and they came with their pana, 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 They came with those things, I can imagine. They came with those things, <laughs> you know, very dirty things. And we see very clear, clean people like you going there with your suit. And these people are so dirty, and they, they command you. No, no, not me. No, no, no. They cannot command me. I cannot be commanded by these uh, dirty people. Huh? And you find people, hey, hey, they tell the story, hey, go back, come, come, leave us. Uh, and they, they order you things. <laughs> they order you some fun, and you, you oblige. You are so down there. No, not me. Not me. Actually, Samuel, was it Saul? Saul did that kind of a business. You remember Saul? You remember Saul? He tried this kind of business. Went there to some old sorcerer, kamze, kamama kaze. He went there, disguising himself. And then karumanzera, oh, and then you know those kind of things. No, not me, not me, not me. What about you? <laughs> not me. I'm not going to bow before a sorcerer. Hallelujah. I can't go there with my suit there and start, no, 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 I'm sorry, Muse. I'm sorry, not me. Some other people, not me. So, <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar called these guys. They came with their panavaneria. They all came. And they started doing their thing there. And they, all, they looked, they looked, oh, nothing was, they, nothing. So when there was nothing, then the king was angry. He, hey, you guys, you have been cheating me all around. Your day is now. You are going to be killed. All of you, you are going to face death sentence. And a general was called, the name was Arioko. This Arioko, deal with these people. They have been cheating me all along. They can't tell me what I dreamt. They can't even tell me the meaning of the dream. Get them out of my face. And so, Arioko was there, ready to kill all of them. And then they were there saying, you see, when they saw that death was imminent, they said, okay, there are some people who are not here. You see, when they were called the first time, they rushed. They, not, they did not tell Daniel, Shadrach, and Abednego that there was, the king had called people at Ikulu. They did not. They did not. They thought they were going to have goodies. So when the things, table stand, uh, there are some people who are not here. Hmm? Some people should be with us here. They're not here. <laughs> who are not here? Uh, Daniel and his friends are not here. Hmm, they're not here. <laughs> so Daniel was called, and he came to the king. Hey, king, what, what's the problem? What is here? These people have not told me what I'm asking. They, I want them dead. So the king, uh, Daniel said, okay, okay, Mkubwa, long live. You know, it's also good to respect government and rulers. Daniel knew Nebuchadnezzar was not going to live forever. But because that was the way they addressed their kings, so he goes there and brag, long, long live, uh, uh, king. That doesn't make you worship. You're not worshiping the person. You're only giving, when you cross out your excellency. You're not worshipping the person. You're only giving him due word, respect. So Daniel went there, king live forever. 
But he knew he was not going to live forever. <laughs> but because that's the way uh, the, the, the leaders were being given respect, he did it. So he told him, give me time, give us time. Then Daniel, when they, he went back home, he did not go for a better sorcerer at the neighborhood. No, 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 no. He called his friends, the four of them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and him, they had prayers. Hallelujah. They prayed to God, and God told them the dream. And he came told the king, hey, king, in your dream you saw a big, a big statue that had a head of gold, chest and silver, of, uh, sil chest and, uh, and, uh, and arms of silver, the, the, the belly of bronze, and the legs of iron. And down there, there was a mixture of clay and iron. And when you are looking at that thing, you saw a stone carved by nobody's hand, no human being. But he came and smashed the whole thing, and the thing was finished. Hey, Nebuchadnezzar, hey, that's what I saw, Daniel. What does that one mean now? Poor, poor, I'm going to tell you. Poor. Then Daniel told him, this is what it means. You see that one? The head of gold, that's Babylon. Your kingdom, that's going to rule. After you, oh, he did not want to hear that. After you, I don't know what happens with a human mind. When somebody gets to the top, after you, after you. No, 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 he doesn't want to hear that. But Daniel was not a politician, so he told him, after you, another kingdom will come. Less than yours, but anyway, it will also finish you. The kingdom of the silver, that is the uh, maiden, maiden passions. It ruled those years. Then after that one, the belly and dies of brass, that is the kingdom of the Greece, the Greeks. And then after that, the iron legs, that's the kingdom of Rome that ruled from 146 B.C. all the way to 476 A.D. It crossed over from A B.C. to A.D. And then that kingdom of Rome was divided into ten smaller kingdoms that we have down there at the toes there. Some strong like iron, others weak like clay. And then at that time, a stone that came from the mountain, not covered by any human being, came and smashed that's the kingdom we are waiting for. Let me remind you now where we are. Are we in the days of BC? Hey, answer me, church. Are we in the days of BC? Are we in the days of gold? No. Silver? No. Bronze? No. Where are we now? At the time of the divided Roman Empire. That's where we are. Any time, let me tell you, friends, any time. God is going to set up his kingdom. This kingdom that will be given to those people who, will have, who are called the saints of the, living, of, of, of the living God. Those people who are obedient to God. Those people who, are, who know Jesus Christ as their personal savior. They acknowledge Jesus as the king. They are the ones who are going to be in this kingdom. It's coming. It's coming. The kingdom of the stone. The kingdom of Jesus is coming. That's the kingdom I want to be. Hallelujah. I don't want to be a Babylonian thing there. Only were they 200 years? You know, the one that ruled most were the Romans, 600 years. But still, short time. I want to be in a kingdom that is going to rule forever. A kingdom of joy, a kingdom of happiness, a kingdom of righteousness. That's the kingdom I want. So let me now go now quickly. These, these people, these people that are going to inherit this kingdom, what is their conduct? How are they behaving? while they are waiting for this kingdom, how are they behaving? How would you know them? It is saying that the conduct of the heirs of the kingdom of God, uh, that is, those that are receiving the kingdom, are described by Apostle Paul in Hebrews 12, 28, 13, verse 1 there, which they are able to have, which they are able to have enabled by the grace of God, is one of service. They are serving in a manner that God would accept. That's one conduct. They are serving in a manner that God would accept. Let me tell you, friends, you can be serving, but you, you must ask yourself, am I serving in a manner that God would accept? You could be serving, the elder, pastor, whatever, but are you serving in a manner that God would accept? That's something you're going to ask yourself. Number two, they are serving with reverence. 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 Let's be humble, people. They are also serving with godly fear, giving God 
the, the fear, the godly fear we call it. And that, that in verse 1 of uh, Hebrews, they are serving or they are living together in brotherly love. Let me talk about that a moment. Love, brotherly love. I'm calling upon you, members of Nairobi Central Church and the whole of the, of the Christian fraternity in Kenya and abroad, that we need to, to, to exercise brotherly love. When this world is so divided on many lines, political lines, tribal lines, all these isms, when everybody else is suffering from those isms, as Christians, we should live together in brotherly what? Love. I'm commenting because I know what's going on. I'm a Muse, you can see me. Okay, my sinners are here, but I'm a Muse also in my own rights. And let me tell you, I've been in this country now for six, almost six, six years. I've been living in this world. I know what's going on. I know there's a lot of hate going on among us people. Even among us members of the church, there's hatred going on, circulating in, among us, us. There's a lot of strife going on along, among us, us. That one should not be. People who are waiting for the kingdom of God, they are, have a conduct of loving one another. Hallelujah. Loving one another. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. It doesn't matter what class you may have been placed. It doesn't matter. We are in one conduct, brotherly love. So that's the conduct. And then, let me now discuss the last one. I can see my time is here. I'm, I'm looking very well here. I'm, I'm in time. Allow me now to discuss the last point in this presentation. The responsibilities of these heirs of the kingdom. What are their responsibilities? The very first one, the very first responsibility is to accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Praise God. That is your number one, number one responsibility is that you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior and live a full Christian life. I have no time to tell you what, all, all that, what is in all that. But, my friends, you need to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. This idea of having, knowing so many things about God, knowing so many things about the Bible, but not knowing, not having a personal relationship with Jesus, I can tell you that's not going to get you into the kingdom. We must have a relationship, a very personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus. A personal one. Hapa, hapa. Our best day. Hey, what with Vijana? Our best day. Hey, muko wapi Vijana? Our best day. Our Rafiki yako. Jesus must be your friend. You must open your heart for Jesus. Aingie bukai na yeye. Our your friend. Watch a story that could you mengi Yesu. Yes, I know you know many things about Jesus. He was born. That's okay. Everybody knows that. He lived a sinless life. Everybody knows that. He died on the cross. Yes, everybody knows that. But the question is, have you allowed him into your heart? Is he your friend? Does he order your life? Does he lord over your life? Do you have some secret chambers that will not allow him to get in, if you wanted to get in, oh, no, 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 Jesus, no, Apa, Apa, Pana. Do you have any sacred chambers? You shouldn't have. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus should be able to get in, into your heart and out and, you know, out, anytime. Hallelujah. Anytime you should be entering, anytime in your heart, and atoka king here. You know, he's your body. Now, the second one, the second responsibility is to be a vessel through which Jesus could impact others and save them together with you. That's the other responsibility. To make sure that Jesus can use you to impact other people. Remember, Jesus is coming soon. What was the, what was the theme for come meetings? Jesus is coming soon. Get what? Get involved. Get involved. Husika, my friend, in your office. Husika. In your home, be involved. Wherever you are, in your neighborhood, be involved. I'm happy that there are some people who have brought visitors today. Thank you very much. Be involved. But now it could be you asking. Revelation 22, 17 says, The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. 
and let him who hears say, come. You extend the invitation. You have come, call others. Come. Injo, injo, bika. Come, 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 go, come. I don't know what they say in all languages, but uh, yeah. Come. Hamba. Hey, hamba. Ulimulam. Hamba. Hamba. Come, come, come. Can you, anyon, anyon. Come. Tell people to come. It's good. If you're enjoying it, why can't you share with other people? If you're not calling other people, could be you're not, you're not enjoying it. Otherwise, you could not keep it from others if you are enjoying it. So if you're enjoying to be in the kingdom, tell others, okay, hamba, enjoy. This gospel of the kingdom of God is so important that Jesus will only come after it has been taken to all the people in the whole world. That's when Jesus will come. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to everybody and to be a testimony. And then the end shall come. We are here and suffering as we are because we have not done our bit. I wish we could all stand up and take the gospel to everyone. It gets to everyone and Jesus would come. Now, Jesus desires that everyone who has been privileged to know this gospel should be involved in spreading it to the other people, to others. So, could be you are wondering... How, how, could this, uh, how, could I be, how could you be involved? It could be you are wondering. I want to finish by saying this. Ellen G. White, one of our best writers, has said this. Has a sure method, which I'm sure would give you success if you implemented it. This found in the book, in our book called Ministry of Healing, page 143, which says, Christ's method alone would give you true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with the people as one who desires their good. He showed sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence. And then he invited them, follow me. That is Jesus' method that if every one of us applied this method, you would be happy getting people come to Christ. You'd be excited to see people coming to Christ. From this statement, <clears throat> from this statement, one of our pastors in one of the divisions of the General Conference, the 13 divisions, one of them called South, Southern Asia Pacific Division, one pastor reading that statement from Ellen White, she came up, she was, he was inspired and came up with what we are calling six C's, which if everyone could employ, can be a successful evangelist. And I want to finish with this one. Six C's. Jesus mingled with the people. So what did he do? He contacted Jesus contacted people. One of the seas, he contacted people. Went, hey, hi, how are you? He went to the byways and the highways, contacting people. Jesus was not staying in Jerusalem. Hey, people come, you want salvation? Come to me in Jerusalem. No, he was mingling with the people, contacting people, number one. Number two, when Jesus was going around there contacting people, wow, he got concerned. <laughs> people are living like this. These are sick people. These are demon-possessed. These are all oh, manner of issues. He got concerned what he saw as he went by contacting people. So after that, when he, he got, he got concerned, he did not stop there. What did he do? He was moved with compassion. Oh, sorry about this situation. He was moved with compassion. Let me tell you people, we must be compassionate. He showed sympathy to the people he saw. And then he did not stop there at the, at the compassion level. He went ahead and took care. He took care. He ministered to the people's needs. He ministered to their needs. People, washiriki wanzangu, we must be involved in taking care of the less fortunate people. And I want to thank Central Church. I know we have, I hope, I hope the ACC, uh, is it going on? You people are Mbele, zero, zero 01, hallelujah. Zero one church, hallelujah. Zero one church. You are clever to have that thing, to, to soften us. You know, sometimes you can be so hard, but when you are taking care, you get softened. When you see somebody with no shoes, when you have so many at your house, you, oh. when you see somebody has no food and you have thrown some food in the dust, you feel, oh, I'm sorry. Take care. And let me remind you, when Jesus comes, he's going to divide the whole world into two groups. And what's the criteria? I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. Remember that, chapter 25, I was naked, you gave me something to wear. 
I was thirsty. Give me something to drink. I was in hospital. You came visiting with me. I was in prison taking care. And when you take care of people's needs, what will happen? You are going to win people's confidence. Like Jesus, he won people's confidence. And number six, the last of the C is conversion. People are going to come. Hallelujah. People are going to follow you. Bid them follow me. Jesus is going to come. After they, he, has, they, he has won their confidence, he asked them to follow him, and they followed him. If all of us followed this method of our Lord Jesus Christ, evangelism would be easy and enjoyable, and one that would bear much fruit. May the good Lord, the master and king, bless all of us as we get busy in his vineyard. Hallelujah. We must be involved. We must. We have no other option. If you have become a Christian, you have no option. You must go out and share the good news with other people. And this method is going to give you success. Hallelujah. This method, Jesus' method alone, is going to give you true success. So how many want to, to be involved? I want to be involved. Hallelujah. I am involved. I'm still, I've gone on retirement, but I'm still involved, even in my retirement. Hallelujah. I want us to be involved in getting people to know about our Lord, about the King of the universe, Jesus Christ, the King of the universe. I want to be a subject in this kingdom. What about you? Do you want to be a, 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 subject, a subject in this kingdom? Where Jesus is the king, can you imagine? Yes, and a king. Ah, I want that one. Hallelujah. I want where Jesus is the king. Hallelujah. He's the one calling shots. He's the one sitting at the cabinet. <laughs> He's the one sitting at the cabinet. You can imagine what kind of resolutions are going to be made. Good ones. Peaceful ones. So may God bless you, my people. I want to invite you that Lord, may the Lord help you to become part of this team, a subject to this kingdom, and do something about it. Get involved. <laughs>